Okay, it's been a while since I've done one of these, but I uh, finally got another uh, another box of stuff through from Japan. And uh, I guess well, what we're going to do today is open it up and just have a look what's in there. Uh, I've taken plenty of the suggestions on how to open these things. I've now gone with kitchen, a kitchen knife, which is a, what is it, it's a mundial turkey knife. So that should be good enough to cut through pretty much anything. And a blunt scalpel. So hopefully we won't need to use that and we'll just go with the scissors. Um, another thing as well is I've had a few comments regarding the uh, zoom on the camera. So I've got a Sony RX100 Model 4, which is a, a modern camera. Um, problem with it is, is that uh, Sony had an excessive um, zoom issue in the firmware, which has since been solved. So hopefully this video should be uh, a lot better quality wise. Also with the latest uh, firmware updates, it allows the camera to use 60p, whereas previously you could only use 50p. So that, that was because it was a, a power camera, which is what we have in, uh, have in Australia. Um, but now being able to use NTSC, hopefully the, the video quality should be a little bit better. So this batch is going to be a little bit smaller. I didn't get one as large as last time and probably won't have as much cool stuff in it. But we'll open it up anyway and have a look. So the first one I've got here, I've got no idea what it is, but... Um, these sorts of packets are pretty common with uh, the, the Japanese domestic um, freight. So they just have a general packet like that, um, which make, really makes a lot of sense because you cut down on cardboard and cut down on bulk. So I'm just cut this one open. I have no idea what it says on the front, by the way. Okay, so just finding out where that ends. And we'll just chop it with the turkey scissors. And it's been packed pretty well, so it may be difficult to get out. Okay. So the first one here is, let's move that to the side. It's a Citizen Christron. Bring that close to the camera. Um, so what these are, is these are an early quartz movement. And I got this one specifically for the movement. Reason being I've got a repair job here for a Citizen uh, Crystron 4 Mega, which is one of the top of the line quartz movements at the time that runs at 4 megahertz rather than 32 kilohertz, like most of the, um, the standard quartz movements. So, having a look there, it looks like it's probably been worn like 10 times or something. The uh, crystal has got a few marks on it, but it's otherwise a pretty, uh, pretty attractive watch. So, whether I'll end up using this for parts or not, I'm still not sure, but uh, I had to get it anyway to finish, that, uh, finish the repair. The cost of this was ridiculously low, so it was definitely worth the risk of... Uh, getting it and if it wasn't going to work out then um, then so be it so there you go so that's the first one there the bracelet's actually quite good quality it's a solid link bracelet you can see it there that'll be original to the watch and it's got the original uh, CQ buckle there so these movements are roughly equivalent to I think the uh, the 7546 in the Seiko it came out roughly around the same time or even probably probably more so maybe the seven one two three but uh, there you have it so that's the first one there and we'll just get rid of this packaging now again I have absolutely no idea what any of that says except for the English stuff there which says it's a uh, a grand quartz so we'll just turn this one over and cut it. out there. This one's just come packed in some sort of waxed paper. And it's been stuck up. One of the reasons I'm not doing too many uploads at the moment is just the state of internet in Australia. So to do a decent size upload it will take two days. 
which is just ridiculous. And that's because we just don't have a very good, um, very good policy on this sort of stuff uh, from a federal perspective for quite a while. So this one here is a Seiko Grand Quartz and it's got a dual quartz movement which I know because it's got um, the longer logo which signifies it's a dual quartz. Now this is gold coloured as you see. Now the only reason I bought this is because the gold plate was in excellent condition. So I think you can see, I'm not sure if that's a scratch or not. I think it probably is a scratch. But yeah, generally um, I wouldn't buy gold cases, reason being that as soon as the plating's damaged, they just look very bad very quickly. So normally I wouldn't buy these. The Grand Quartz was the top of the line quartz movement at the time. These came out in the late 70s and I think were uh, finished by the, uh, by the uh, early 80s or thereabouts. Um, the date on this one is 1978. At the time they were ludicrously expensive and uh, the accuracy standard on these is quite good as well. I think it's within a few seconds a year but uh, I've got a data sheet on it here somewhere. Now this has got a textured dial. I've always liked textured dials. It's got a good crown on it as well. It's a signed crown. So there you go. I've got a few, few other, a uh, few other of these as well. These are the, these are high-end quartz models, and they're they're just really nice. So um, if anyone that's into <clears throat> this sort of style, I definitely recommend picking one of these up for your collection. They don't go for very much, so I think you can buy them on eBay for probably under a hundred dollars, and that's Australian. And on Yahoo Japan, they don't go for much either. So there you go. Okay, so I'll move over to the next one. And uh, we have another one of these envelope things. I'm just going to snip this across the top carefully. And this one here, I'll just get rid of this. This is a Seiko Elnix. So the Elnix were Seiko's electronic watches. So they still have a balance wheel, but the balance wheel was driven by an electronic movement. So they have a quartz oscillator in there, and the oscillator sends a signal to some uh, magnets, and the magnets flip the, uh, the pallet uh, the pallet fork back and forth, which drives the um, drives the uh, the balance wheel. I'll do a better video on these later on because I'm clearly stumbling my words here. But um, I'll do a much better video on these later on, uh, showing the insides of them and how they work, and also running. So this one's got a bit of an odd case style. See there, it kind of looks like a manta ray, and it's definitely on the original bracelet as well, which is the uh, Japanese domestic model bracelet and you can see that it's had very little wear so there you have it that's the Elnix this is these are all non runners by the way so they probably need some sort of service work and we go with another one of these packets This one, I can't really tell where it starts and ends, so we'll just have to be careful. Now, this guy here is a Seiko Actus, and that'll come in focus. So, the Actus, it was Seiko's, I guess they aimed it at young professionals in the 60s and 70s. They normally had a higher grade movement, and this one's got the 6106 movement. It's a 1970s 70 
uh, manufacture. You can tell by the zero there, that's the year of manufacture. And then the next number is the month, so it's September 1970. Now I got this one to repair and then sell. So the glass there uh, is cracked, but the actual watch underneath looks really good. So the dial's in good condition, doesn't appear to have any damage. And the case isn't too bad as well, so that'll clean up quite nicely. So that'll get serviced with a new crystal and um, cleaned up and gaskets and all that sort of thing. Um, seeing as I've only got sort of a quarter of the bracelet, that'll go in my spare parts bin and uh, it'll end up on a leather strap. So there you go. Okay, now we'll move on to the next one, which is a slightly different packet to what we've seen with the previous ones. And this one is another Elnix. There we go. So this one's got um, a bit of a funny dial on it. So you see it's got a gradient dial. It's uh, blue and it's not quite white, I don't think. Sort of slightly an off-white. They call it a sunrise dial or something like that. So this is the same as the one from before, the same movement. So that's one of the electronic movements. And it was made in 1975. So when the Elnix movements were out, they were ridiculous, well the Elnix watches were out, they were ridiculously expensive. So they were more accurate than a standard uh, mechanical watch. But uh, they were eventually phased out in favour of quartz watches, which are much more reliable, they don't have as many moving parts and so on. Now the bracelet that it's on I think is a Mariman, which were a pretty popular Japanese brand at the time. So we have a look there. It says Bear. So that's just another bracelet manufacturer. So I'm not sure what bracelet these came with originally, but uh, I would suggest that by the straight lugs, probably some sort of oyster style bracelet. But, uh, yeah, that one again will get serviced and then I'll figure out what I want to do with it. I've already got a fair few of these, so whether I keep it or not will be the question. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. And this bag has got a lot of packing in it. Alright, so that's another Actus, and it's an Actus SS, which is the stop second movement. So, when they have SS on them, that usually means it's a 6106 movement, which, we just give it a wind, I'll show you why, what's special about that. So you see there it's running, so when I pull the crown, it stops. Just show that again. So the 6106 movement is very similar to the 6105, which turns up in the um, the Apocalypse Now diver, um, except that it has the day as well, and also it's a, it uh, has more jewels than the 6105 and uh, a different crown system because you can't with these. They're a push crown to change the day and date. Whereas you can't do that with a diver watch because of the locking crown. So on the uh, 6105 it's a pull and turn to change the date. But uh, yeah, this is in much better condition than I expected. The photo was terrible. But it's also on the original bracelet which has seen a bit of action. But that's okay, that can be cleaned up. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's because I've got a faceted crystal which I expected to be heavily scratched and it's barely even marked so I'm quite lucky with that 
but yeah, it's hard to get the dial in the right light with a faceted crystal. I think you can probably see what's going on there. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Now that one there is a Seiko Quartz, it's the Type 2, that's what's marked on the dial, but it is a 7546 movement. So I mainly got this one for parts because I do service a lot of 7546 movements. I wonder if that'll come off. No, that's, that's a, that's a uh, pop back so that won't come off easily. So yeah, this one's pretty beaten up. Um, the dial and hands are not great, um, probably looks okay in the video but they're actually corroded, corroded so probably what will happen with that is I'll harvest the movement out of it and uh, then keep the rest for spares or, or sell them off there you have that one, so when these were new they probably looked really good the faceted crystals pretty heavily worn you can see there It's. Uh, chip just everywhere they're, uh, they're real scratch magnets these things so I've got a few watches with a faceted crystal and I don't wear them very often just because just for that reason okay we'll move to the next one up so I'll just snip that across there <clears throat> so that there let's get this stuff out of the way hang on that there is another Actus SS so same as the previous two movement wise it's a 6106 movement but in the uh, TV dial or what they call TV dial or square case so that has a, uh, I think it's a plexi crystal. Yeah, it's a plexi crystal, which is good. That means I can clean it up easily enough. Uh, but yeah, that that's a pretty good dial on that one. So probably needs the loom on the hands touched up. That's gone a bit black. But beyond that, it's in pretty good condition. And I'll just turn it over and have a look there. So that's from. 1973 and made in November. Let's see, it's a 6106 movement. I really like these because they always go for uh, fair prices and they're actually a lot of watch for the dollars. So you'll see that it's the original bracelet as well. So eventually, when I get around to it, that'll get repaired and uh, sold on. So there you go. Okay, I've got a few more left. Also, if anyone wants to leave comments, like, leave productive ones. I spend a lot of time and money doing all this sort of stuff and film it for free. So, um, yeah, it always is better to read productive comments rather than your video suck or something like that. Okay, so... This one is a Seiko 5. Now the crystal's pretty scratched up, so you're not going to get a good look at the dial, but I know from experience that'll be un in good condition underneath the uh, underneath the crystal there. So it's on the original bracelet, I think. Yep, that's the original bracelet for this watch. So that's a Japanese domestic market bracelet. You'll see there, it's the end link's been flipped around. But yeah. It's a sports style watch, and the date on that one, it's a 6119 movement. 
and the date is 1969 March and uh, you won't see a mark waterproof after 1970 because that's when uh, that's when the labeling laws in the US said that you couldn't do that anymore because they're technically not waterproof they're water resistant so that's the one there so it hasn't got loomed hands uh, or a loom dial which is common on some of the older Japanese domestic market stuff okay one more or two more actually so this is in a box and it's been sealed really well but not well enough to defeat these scissors Here we have another type 2 quartz. You can see there that's got a uh, interesting dial finish on it. The crystal's pretty badly scratched. And it's got some fogging on the inside as well, which probably means it have water in it. But it's a runner. It's always good news. That one is a uh, 1977 7546 movement on some odd bracelet it's been snipped there to fit some other case but yeah this one's another I bought this one for parts as well so again uh, non loomed dial on hands okay so we're just on the final one now box and this is all it had in it the main reason I bought this camera by the way was because it um, it does high speed shooting oops uh, so yeah you can do uh, up to a thousand frames of a second shooting with this camera it's the um, cheapest camera that does it and uh, I've used that a few times in some of the other videos so this one's another one I bought for parts you can see the case is really nothing to write home about it's got quite a bit of corrosion on it and that's the movement on the inside so that's another 7546 movement which I see a lot of so there's the, uh, the coil there the gear train and all the circuits all up in there but uh, yeah purely for parts so there you go um, yeah so that that concludes that so I hope uh, anyone watching has enjoyed it and uh, yeah appreciate any positive feedback or create or uh, constructive feedback and uh, yeah I'll have another video coming soon which will be a lot larger um, with some stuff that I got uh, interstate, but uh, yeah, that'll be a little while away, but it's on the way um, But yeah, thanks for everyone that has watched and given um, Given some constructive feedback. I really appreciate it and uh, Yeah, I really enjoy doing these uh, these videos and want to keep it up so uh, yeah um, Thanks for that and uh, see you again soon